you know, it's it's early. It's nine games into their season, but I can say I, I didn't expect them to look this good at really any point in the season. Like, that's how I felt about the team. Look, you kind of got to, you know, admit, you know, when you might have been a little bit wrong. Still a lot of basketball left, but they've looked really good. Defensively is the main thing. We were, we were talking before the pod, Dev, like you can't really single any one person out. It's just like collectively the defense has been really good. Freddie's been clutched down the stretch. Guys like Dylan Brooks has been mad efficient. Um, Ime, it, it's Ime for me. That's the guy I got to give credit, man, because he changed. He, he really changed Boston's culture. And I said, like, like going into this job, like he's going to have his work cut out for him. And he's stepping up to the plate, man. He's accepting the challenge, and he's got these boys playing some damn good basketball. Like, I, I definitely didn't expect him to be 6-3. and three. I didn't know if this defense was going to look this good. But defense has been damn near elite. He may has got them playing some great basketball. And like we mentioned about the Timberwolves, man, defense is something that you can't really – you can't really fake it. Like, even if it's early on in the season, like, you can kind of tell it's rare that you see a team, like, just start out hot on the defensive side of the floor – and then they just get back to being bad. Like, it's rare that you see that. And they got the pieces on their team to be, like, a solid, at least top half of the league defense. Now, would that continue to them being above 500 as the season goes on? I don't know. Not sure about that. But that's definitely something that you can build on. And they, if their defense continues to be top 10-ish, the offense doesn't have to be, like, all worldly for them to continue to be competitive and win games, which really – if they flirt with the play-in, like, by the end of the season, that's a lot better than what I would have had them. I mean, I had them, like, second to last in the West. So, you know, they've they've been impressive, man. But if I have to give one guy the credit, it's definitely Ime Udoka because after all the drama in Boston, we ain't got him a new job, and he's accepted that challenge of trying to change his culture. And through nine games, this is the best basketball that the Houston Rockets have played since James Harden left. Like it's been a while since they played this good. I know they, I know they had that long winning streak, but we knew that was fake. But this, this seems like something that they can build on, and I like to see it for them. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with Houston now is that they look a lot more like an actual team than just a bunch of guys out there playing AAU ball, like they may have looked like for long stretches last season. You just look at what they got now, and it's like you know Fred Van Vliet. They they, they call him Steady Freddie for a reason. Not that he's been, like, otherworldly, but he just brings that veteran point guard dynamic to them. It's allowed Jalen Green to just focus on scoring the basketball, getting some buckets, and honestly, like, we'll get there when we get there, but he's one of my player shout-outs for the week because our, our boy Shangoon, he, I feel like he's been getting a lot of credit, but there's been a lot of games where I've I've liked a lot of what I've seen from Jalen Green, too, and as somebody who is pretty critical of him in the past, like, for him to be taking those steps and for him to look a lot better when put in an actual system, that's really good to see. And then further highlighting Sangoon, like not to say he's not – like he should be getting his credit. He's played really well for them as well. May even be their best player. And then Dylan Brooks, he won that divorce. That divorce with the Grizzlies, like the Grizzlies look terrible. And Dylan Brooks on the Rockets, like – the biggest issue with him was him taking these ill-advised shots, putting a giant target on their back, and just all, all these different negative aspects, like being just a horrible offensive player. And this season, like he's bought into a role, that efficiency, we're starting to see it drop a little bit from that 60-60 stuff he was doing at the beginning of the season, which was expected, but still either way, like he's bought into a role and he's being efficient in that role, and he's still bringing the defense night in and night out. And with that, they still have all this other talent just waiting in the wings. Like, Cam Whitmore, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he just got sent down to the G League, so he'll actually get to develop more, and maybe he'll come back by, like, next season or something and end up being a bigger part of their rotation. You know, Amon Thompson, he's only played, like, four games, but we know what he can do once he gets more of a chance and can use to develop a little bit. And so they, they have even more guys than who's been showing out so far. And like you said, Reek, really, e ties it all up, and – I almost want to ask you guys, like, are you guys surprised that he was able to course correct them so quickly? Because even for as talented as Boston was last year, like, you got to think Boston, or not last year, but the year before when he first got there, 
when Ime got to Boston, like it took half a season before they were good. Like the first half 18, of that 18, year, 18, they 18, were, 18. yeah, they were not good. So like for them to straight out the gate exceed expectations so quickly, like, I mean, obviously we didn't expect him to be that good, but like I didn't, I definitely didn't think we'd see his impact this immediately, especially when we said like, it's probably going to be a lot in like his scheming and their defense and everything, like you mentioned, looking so much better. I didn't expect it to be this quick. Yeah, this quick is definitely unexpected. I credit to Ime. I don't want to take away from him in this statement, but I think to have a collective buy-in this quickly, there has to be a significant amount of respect from the culture setting that's also likely coming from Freddie and from Dylan Brooks and likely Jeff Green, because this collective of a buy-in on the defensive end and from a team cohesion standpoint on the offensive end, from where they were last year to where they are now, nine games in, it's just complete night and day. Like, it's such a rapid transition and such a drastic transition that credit to Ime, he's obviously done a great job, but this is also what has to be a, Fred Van Fleet, a Dylan Brooks, a Jeff Green being okay. This is the, like the team we want to be. This is the identity we're going to set. And they're setting that tone night in, night out. They were evidently doing it during the preseason because they came out of the gates doing it, minus the first couple of games. And Freddie's been doing it defensively. Dylan Brooks has been doing it defensively. Jeff Green's been in here getting closing minutes and playing very well. Hey, this is a great credit to Ime Adoka. But all these veterans that we were a little bit concerned about during the offseason – They've come in and done what they needed to do for them to be successful because this type of a culture reset this quickly, I don't know if it's ever been done before. So credit to the vets and to Ime, all of the coaching staff. It, it's a very, very impressive re- reset that they've had over the last few months. Yeah, I was pretty much the same thing. Like, I, I am surprised because even though they brought in all those vets, like you mentioned, Dev, and how Gabe, you compared to like the Celtics, I think part of it, like Ime has that experience. It took him half a season to kind of, I guess, reset the culture in Boston to get them playing well. So he has that experience, which is good. He's got the vets coming in also. But this Rockets culture was so shot the last couple of years, man. Like just everything after Maury left and, you know, the James Harden situation. Like it's been shot since then. Like you said, Gabe, and I like to call the Rockets this. I was calling them it last year. Ever since we started the podcast, man, AAU basketball, that, that's how they were playing. Jalen Green might average 23 points, but he's taking some of the worst shots in the league. Like his shot diet was just terrible. And this is the first time that these young guys have real structure. So it's a combination of a lot of things that's kind of resetting this culture. Didn't expect it to look this solid this quickly, but, you know, it's it's good to see, man, because that, that was like the worst place in basketball, in my opinion, just as far as like, on-court culture type stuff. I, there were teams that were in, like, worse directional positions, but as far as their basketball play and just their culture overall, it was, like, the worst it's been. I saw Dev um, – not Dev, um, Gary in the chat saying, like, they also filtered out a lot of the guys that were negatives, whether on or off the court, which is also a good thing. So it's, it's a combination of things. But to answer your question, yes, I'm very surprised that it seemed like it's a rapid – we sit at the culture and it's working so far. 